Welcome to the CBS Radio Mystery Theater Archives, the only YouTube channel which has the original classic episodes of the CBS Radio Mystery Theater in order with no ads. Thank you for listening, and now, enjoy the show. Valor boy, so shall you scale the stars. To scale the stars. To the great Virgil who penned those words 2,000 years ago, it was merely a poetic metaphor in the same league with climbing the highest mountain and reaching for the moon. And although today all three phrases have become tantalizing realities, they are still deeds associated with the bravest, the noblest, and most sparkling of creatures, the explorer. Yes, they're still around. Some reaching for that distant star. Of course, nobody ever tells them what to do, if and when they finally get there. And that can be downright disastrous. You are talking about them as if they were animals. They are animals. They're intelligent beings. Rubbish. And they deserve to be treated with dignity, even respect. You are coming dangerously close to losing your job, Doctor. Justify it any way you want. There's only one word for what you intend to do. And what is that? Murder. Plain and simple murder. Our mystery drama, Stranded, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Victoria Dan and stars Marion Seldes and Gordon Gould. I'll be back shortly with Act One. They are two astronauts, the best and the brightest. They have been sent out further than any manned probe has ever gone, past the farthest moon, past the most distant planet in the solar system, out beyond the loneliest outpost. For the past three years, they have been gathering data from their survey of the nearest star, a star with a ring of planets all its own, But now begins the most treacherous part of the mission, the journey home. And you know the first thing I'm going to do when we get back, Barry? Take one of those long, wet showers in real water. Turn the spigot on full force and let that steam just bake right in. What are you going to do? Oh, (laughs) I haven't thought about it much. (laughs) You crazy. All I've been thinking about is that nice little reunion with my wife and my kid. Would you believe he's four? He wasn't even walking when I left. Now, come on, Perry. Isn't there anybody you'd be happy to see? No, no, Raymond. You should have gotten married. Just knowing that my wife is waiting for me. I like it my way. No family, no time. Yeah, but three years out and another three back. I like space. I don't want to go home. They're going to make you a general? Yeah, yeah. And put me behind some desk. If I want to sign up for another mission, I'll be competing with guys who are brighter and every year always younger. Well, I've had it with space. As soon as we get back, I'm quitting. To do what? Make a bushel of money publishing my findings. What findings? The preliminary studies of this solar system. I know you've logged your opinion, but I still maintain that a strong possibility exists that one or two of the inner planets contain atmospheres capable of sustaining life. Perhaps intelligent life. Let's hear this. What if, just what if, it's a life form even more intelligent than we are? What? Are you picking up anything on the screen? No. What about ultrasound? Holy cow. A meteor swarm and closing fast. It can't be. It would have shown up on a screen. And the dark screen isn't working. I just checked the circuits yesterday. Maybe we can program a course out of this. Go to auxiliary. What? We're right in the center of it, Perry. Evasive maneuver. Come on, come on. 
another one like that, we've had it. It, it's responding. Oh, yeah. we're, we're clear now. Yeah, for a minute, I thought we'd had it. Oh, no. What is it? What's wrong? Just look at the signal light. It's still a cold yellow. But how bad could the damage be? We're about to find out. Well, how bad? We're out of the meteor shower, all right, but not soon enough. I don't think I like the look on your face. That first meteor, it glanced off the hull. And? It ruptured the seal. What? Are you sure? Code orange. Yeah, I'm sure. You realize what this means? Yeah. We've got maybe five minutes until the pressure blows this thing apart. Uh, how can this be happening? How can this be happening now? Get your oxygen helmet on, Ray. This is Mega 7. I repeat, Mega 7. Abandoning main craft. We have sustained severe structural damage. Repeat, we are abandoning ship. Code red. Less than four minutes. Perry, wait. Get to the lifeboat. Listen, please. What the devil's the matter with you? Just listen. There's got to be another Move way. It. Perry, get down the ladder now. But the lifeboat hasn't got enough. That's an order. There she goes. Blown apart like a piece of fruit. Maybe it's a blessing there isn't any sound in outer space. At least we didn't have to hear it explode. Yeah. It's time to talk, Ray. Our first choice is just to float free until we stretch out all the oxygen and fuel. Now, I, I figure that way we might be able to last four, maybe five months. I'll never see my kid. I'll never get to talk to him. The second choice. The one I think we ought to go with is to keep heading in the opposite direction of home. It's a long shot, I know. But heading towards some of the inner planets, utilizing the remaining fuel... The opposite direction of home? Forget home, Ray. But, Terry, even if we make it to one of these planets, even if the atmosphere is livable... The chances are a million to one. Those odds are a lot better than the ones we have now. This is a lifeboat. It's not equipped for anything but docking. Yeah. Well, that's a risk we'll have to take. It's also not designed for heavy landings. So what's the alternative? If the re-entry doesn't kill us, the impact will. We'll die anyway. Yeah. I suppose we will at that. <laughs> drifted off for a minute. Don't you remember? You took a sleep pill. Did I? Uses up less oxygen that way. <sighs> How long? Oh, eight, maybe nine hours. Oh, no, no. How long have we been in here? How long since uh, the accident? Don't you remember? No. <sighs> Three months, one day... Seven hours and 42 minutes. It's the air, isn't it? That's why my mind is so slow. It's down as thin as we can stand it. I never wanted to die in space. I always figured I'd die in bed at a ripe old age. Did I ever tell you about the old tri-level house we bought by the lake? Wait. Can you see it? What? Look how close we are now. Is that the planet? The one can't be more than a million miles away. What do you think? It's very small, isn't it? We'll have just enough fuel to make it into their atmosphere. Or we'll burn up like a match. Oh, you know I'm a little fed up with your negative attitude. We're going to die. That's a fact. If you say that one more time... Up here, down there, what's the difference? Frank, please, just try to hang on a little longer. Don't crack up on me. I'm scared, Perry. I can't help myself. I'm scared. 
I'm scared, too. Do you think they look like us? Who? The creatures on that planet we're going to try to land on? What makes you think there'll be any life there at all? I'm a scientist. I sense these things. Oh, come on, Ray. Go go back to sleep. Very intelligent creatures, I'll bet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> With two heads and green hair. Go to sleep. How long do we get there? Ten solar days. <laughs> feel better? My head's a lot clearer, if that's what you mean. I raise the oxygen levels. I figure in a few moments it won't make a difference one way or the other. Fifteen seconds to re-entry. Ten seconds. What kind of a world is waiting for us down there? Whatever it is. It's the only one we've got. Five seconds. Oh, just pray our parachute slows down a little. Two. One. Brace yourself. External temperature, 1,000 degrees. We're not slowing down enough. It's still too fast. We're going to hit hard. It's going to come out. Richer in oxygen home. Yeah. Oh, oh, my leg. No, just, just sit still. I'll oh. find something to set it with. Oh. You see? What did I tell you? The odds were in our favor. We made it. We're still alive. So far, so good. But what we really need is water. Yeah. yeah. There might be some sort of underground well. Harry? Yes? Listen. To what? Can't you hear it? All I hear is a, a rumble in my ears. A pounding in my head. That noise. That rumbling. It's coming this way. Way? Yeah. Yes. I, I think I hear something. An earthquake. No, 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 no. No, it's something. Something familiar. Something. Wait a minute. That's. That's a mechanical sound. A motor. Not just one, though. Two, three, maybe more. A motor? What am I saying? What am I saying? Who built the motors? There's your answer. Vehicles. Motorized vehicles. That's impossible. Why? Why is it impossible? Because it takes intelligent life to build mechanical devices. There's no camouflage. We're exposed on all sides. We, we don't even have our gun. Perry, what makes you think this is going to be some kind of massacre? They might be aliens, but they're obviously highly intelligent. 
But they wouldn't be driving those trucks or whatever they are. They could have two heads, you know that. They could have two heads. <laughs> Would you listen to me? I'm, I'm babbling like an idiot. It's just my leg. I'm so dizzy. I can't think straight. They're not close enough to see. Wait. What? What kind of monsters are they? Look at their faces. They're moving closer. I can't see. Good Lord. Look at their faces. I can't focus, Ray. What do you see? Look at their faces. In the name of heaven, Ray. Tell me what you see. Fear, it is said, creates an ugliness all its own. In the backwaters of our mind, lurking in the dark recesses of our subconscious, are the shadowy creatures that nightmares are made of. But what substance do the monsters of our dreams have in reality? Are they manufactured from fairy tales and horror stories of our childhood? Or is there really an ugliness beyond our wildest fantasies waiting for us somewhere out there? Or maybe just as far away as Act Two? Can life exist on other worlds? To be specific, can intelligent beings exist in places so far away they are merely points of light in the midnight sky? And if so, what will they look like? Might they be green-skinned, two-headed creatures? Or perhaps monsters so hideous that like the Medusa in ancient legend, the very sight of them would turn a man to stone? On the other hand, might such alien beings not be so very frightful to look at after all? Our two astronauts, who have just crash-landed on the unexplored planet, are about to find out. What do you see, Ray? Their faces. I still can't. They're coming closer. Can you see it now? Yes. But, but it's impossible. Impossible? It can't be. They, they look like us. Exactly like us. But they're aliens. No. We're the aliens. Out of a million planets and a million star systems, how can such a coincidence happen? It can't be coincidence. It has to be something more. They're surrounding us. Getting into some kind of ring. What is it? Don't you recognize a military formation? They are soldiers. What do they intend to do? The one with all the insignia. He must be the ranking officer. Yes. You there, the leader. Uh, we come in peace. Ray, no. He, he's coming toward us. Don't, 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 don't make any sudden moves. They're taking aim. No. Don't move. But they've got to understand that we don't mean them any harm. Ray, keep your hands at your sides. We've got to communicate with them. Can't you see? They're just as frightened as we are. They're going to kill us. No. Look at them. I think what we have here is an old-fashioned standoff. Oh. So, what now? Hold on to my arm. I can't seem to stand up without help. <laughs> oh, the pain is shooting up my spine. What, what is it, Terry? The, the sun. It, it's so bright. Why, why are you... It's getting so hot. Perry! I seem to hear my eyes. Oh, my. Perry, what is wrong? Pain. pain. You've got to stay awake. I've got to hold on. I've got to keep my eyes open. Look, they're moving closer. They're too civilized to kill. My skin. Perry, they're closing in I on us. and black on my now, now. Perry! Oh. Perry, wake up. I can't face them alone. Okay. Whoever, whatever you are, stay away. Don't kill us. Who, uh, who are you? So, you are awake at last. You, you understand me? Yes. But how can you... I am a doctor of languages. 
For the past two weeks, I have been intensely studying the common sounds and symbols which your words have. Two weeks? I've been unconscious for two weeks? The sleeping injection to ease the pain of your injury was most effective. Your leg has been set by surgeons. Wait a minute, hold on. What do you mean, surgeons? Uh, am I home? The tissue should mend quite effectively. No, I can't be home. I, I remember now. Raymond. Where's Raymond? Your companion, the Major. Where is he? I assure you, he is quite well. But where is he? The Major has explained to us about your scientific mission. Look, whatever your name is, what... I am called Dr. Rea, and you are Colonel Perry. <laughs> Wait a minute. This is all a dream, isn't it? I'm <laughs> some padded white room on some alien planet talking to some female who looks for all the world of... like... Like what? I haven't seen a female in over three years. Of course, this is a dream. I assure you, Colonel, you are quite conscious. Except for your hair. I've never seen hair that color before. What kind of chemical pigment do you treat it with? This is its natural state. <laughs> sure, <laughs> that's what they all say. I'm, I'm not dreaming, then. This is all real. This is happening. All right. Who and what are you? As I have previously stated, my name is Dr. Rea. I am a linguist. You are an alien. This word, alien. The major has also repeatedly used such a word. In this case, however, the term is inaccurate. You are the alien. Okay. We are the aliens. So how can you look like we do? We have asked the same question. How can you look like us? I hope you've had better luck answering it than I have. The greatest scientists in the land are even now working night and day to discover the answer. First, we... If must... you were a doctor, why, why do you sound like a nurse? I was about to explain that this experience is quite new to us. It's new to me, too. When your spacecraft first appeared on our radar screens, there was much fear. You mean you tracked our ship? So did our enemies. What enemies? There was a worldwide war alert. An object was descending into the atmosphere at high speed. No one could believe that the object, your ship, was actually what it appeared to be, a vehicle approaching from outer space. One enemy accused Look, another. I, I'm not interested in your petty squabbles. Even now, the situation on the planet grows tense. Only the highest powers in each nation are aware of your existence. What are you talking about? There could be great panic in the world if it was known we had been invaded. Invaded? By... Wait, you, you think that we... Literally, Colonel Perry. The term is correct. <laughs> You will excuse me, Honest Go. Now and make my report. Wait a minute. Why am I strapped into this bed? It is a necessary precaution. A precaution against what? Believe me, it is all rather embarrassing. I, I asked you a question. I must go now. Answer me! Doctor! <laughs> I've never been so glad to see anybody in my entire life. Ray? I kept asking them to let me see you. They wouldn't. I thought you were dead. Ray, what's going on out there? Out where? Outside this padded cell without windows. What kind of people are they? Have you talked to anybody in charge? In charge? The only one I've seen so far is that female, the, the, the doctor. Ray, it's, it's been a month since we crashed. In that time, they've kept me in this little cubicle. I want someone to tell me what's going on. They don't know what to do with us. They? The aliens. I mean, the people who are holding us. You see, where we landed, it wasn't just any place. Uh, I don't understand. The first few weeks when I was learning about them... I found out that they're still behind us in certain ways. 
They're still divided into countries of power. And where we landed was in a special place. A secret place in one of those countries. A secret place? A kind of war base. A weapons installation. Are you serious? I'm not sure what kind of weapons. But from the nature of what I've been able to figure out so far, it's probably nuclear. Nuclear? Is that possible? Theoretically, anything's possible. How advanced do you think they are? I really haven't given it much thought. We have to make plans for our escape, Barry. You're talking like this is some sort of prison. It is a prison. It's a planet. And we're stuck here whether we like it or not. I don't like it. Nobody's asking you to like it. There's nothing we can do about it. Besides, you are the award-winning scientist. Now, here's the opportunity most men dream of. This world, so much like our own, did it evolve separately from us? Or perhaps an earlier civilization? Oh, who cares about that now? But, Raymond, why else did they send us into space? And why else did you go? I'm sorry I ever went. Anyway, do you think that's what we are to them? Scientists? Explorers of the unknown? No. I'll tell you what we are. We're invaders, creatures from outer space. And I'll tell you what else we are. Laboratory specimens. Oh, come on, Ray. You think I'm overreacting? I'm a scientist, remember? If a couple of aliens landed on our world, how would we behave? Would we treat them any differently than they've treated us? I don't know. Oh, yes, you do. First thing we'd do is keep them in isolation. Then we get the best scientists on the planet to study them. The way they're studying us. Studying us? Oh, those tiny little spaces in the ceiling, they're miniature cameras. Every sound we make, every move is watched, observed, cataloged. That's all we are. Laboratory animals. Well, surely they realize how advanced we are. And that's all we'll ever be. Stuck in little cages for the rest of our lives. Even if what you say is true... There isn't much we can do about it. We can escape. You keep using that word. We have to escape. 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 Where? And how am I to face the odds of man's bedevilment and God's? I, a stranger and afraid, in a world I never made. Great words for Mr. Houseman. And what better way to leave us hanging as the fate of our two travelers is temporarily suspended until, of course, we return to face the odds in Act Three. So far, we've presented a tale of two stranded astronauts forced to spend the rest of their lives on a strange, distant world. You might very well declare that here is just an updated version of Robinson Crusoe, Instead of the loneliness of a desert island, Colonel Perry and Major Raymond faced the bitter isolation of four walls. And instead of an ocean to separate them from civilization, there lies the infinity of space. And something else, too. Mysterious jailers, the inhabitants of this alien planet, who, with one exception, have chosen to remain hidden from view. Although, perhaps in the name of fair play, it is time we examine their side of the story. Order. Can we have a little order here? General, what do you intend to do with the aliens? Mr. Secretary, one question at a time. Aliens, the whole thing's a hoax, and you know it. Gentlemen, please. You will all have a chance to say what you've come here to say. Now, we have before us a most delicate situation. After one month of intensive examination, our findings prove quite conclusive. These two men most definitely are from another world. Uh, would you present your findings, Professor Ulto? The uh, two creatures come from a planet in the next star system, approximately five light years away. The velocity required for such a lengthy voyage indicates a technology far exceeding our own. These are highly intelligent beings. But how do we know the whole thing isn't an elaborate fake? A fake? 
the intricate workings of their spacecraft, the materials of their clothes unlike anything we've ever come across. No, I assure you, this is not a fake. Thank you, Professor. Uh, gentlemen, we are faced with a dilemma. If the existence of these creatures were to become common knowledge, worldwide hysteria could result. The question I put to you is, can we afford a mass panic? Come in. Ah, Doctor, how are you? General, I must speak to you. Have I told you what an incredible job you've done with those aliens? Thank you. Deciphering that mysterious alphabet of theirs, unlocking their strange language. Yes, well... Genius. Sheer genius is what it is. Don't think you won't be rewarded for your efforts. General, this is very important. I have heard a rather disturbing rumor. Well, this is a top-secret installation. There aren't supposed to be any kind of rumors. Is it true you plan to keep the existence of these two aliens a complete mystery? Doctor, don't put me in this position. I can understand the rationale. The world isn't ready for such a revelation. But how long do you intend to keep them down here? Creatures that look like us? How can we let them loose on the planet? It's one thing if they were monsters or just different. But these aliens could blend right in with the population. We would never be able to identify them. Then what you're saying is they will remain here? Underground? Permanently? Is it better to have mass panic? People suspecting each other of being aliens? General, I must know. If you must know anything else, do me a favor. And ask Professor Ulto. Professor Ulto, what does he have to do? Why don't you go ask him, Doctor? Ah, Miss Rea, always such a pleasure to see your pretty face. Yes, Professor Ulto, it concerns the two aliens. The aliens, Miss Rea? It's Doctor Rea. Oh, of course. Forgive me, but you are so young for such an achievement. I naturally forget. About the aliens. Yes, Doctor. Is it true? Is what true? Don't fence with me. You know what I'm talking about. Doctor, you really must learn to control your sharp tongue. Did the security committee grant you a free hand with the aliens? What if they did? What do you intend to do with them? Why such a personal interest? I have been in on this thing since the beginning. I was the first person to communicate with them. I learned their language. Yeah, Miss... Doctor... No. Of course. You feel slighted, overlooked. It's just... I've heard stories, Professor. Stories? About experiments you conduct when you can get volunteers. And you object to these experiments? Then the stories are true. What if they are? But it's barbaric. Probing the mysteries of life is not barbaric. Is that what you intend to do with my two aliens? Your two aliens. We have been gifted by the visit of a shining new culture. The treasure of a new language, a magnificent language. I really don't see the point in becoming hysterical. Certainly not over a couple of creatures. But you're talking about them as if they were animals. They are animals. They're intelligent beings. They deserve to be treated with dignity, even respect. If I became sentimental over every creature I dissected... Dissected? You out of your mind. There's only one word for what you intend to do. And what is that? Murder. <laughs> Plain and simple murder. <laughs> This is the evidence I spoke of, General. Evidence? What are you talking about? These documents here, which I will ask you to circulate, which will prove this entire alien business was simply a hoax. Yes, that's what I thought you said. But we both know that these two aliens are genuine. But what good does it do either of us? I don't understand. By some incredible twist of fate or 
coincidence of evolution. They look like human beings. But you and I, General, know that they are from another world. We know they truly are aliens, don't we? Yes. The spaceship and their clothing proved it. But we must change that. We must agree on what the facts really were and what the facts are going to become. I have absolutely no idea what you're getting at, Doctor. Then listen to me. These are the new facts. You are going to release a statement that what crashed in the desert was some kind of manned probe. Experimental, of course, belonging to another department. Well, what other department? Oh, who cares? You make one up. There are so many secret projects these days who can keep track. You're suggesting that we fabricate some lie? Yes. We cannot afford to let the world find out the truth. You heard them all at the security meeting. They want to believe it was a hoax. Well, make it easy on yourself. Let it be a hoax. Oh, of all the ridiculous... Of... General, isn't that how you'd like to see the problem resolved? As a hoax? Well, even if I did, there's still no way. There are many ways. The first is to destroy what's left of their clothing and spaceship, the only proof that the two of them are aliens. And then we must substitute proof that they are human. But they are not human. Agreed. But with a couple of false birth certificates and other necessary identification papers, quite simple to produce, who is going to know different? Uh, you make it sound very simple. Give me a year, General. And some of our best personnel. We could teach the aliens our ways, our customs. Mm -hmm. What if these creatures don't want to cooperate? But they want to survive, don't they? For all intents and purposes, this is their home now. They'll have to learn to live in it. Uh, I don't know. I just don't know. By the way, General... There are several people who would prefer to take care of the situation my way. What people? The right people. The people you, for example, depend upon for your next promotion. What are you saying? I'm saying, General, that I have connection. Uh-huh. To go on. There is an isolated spot in the west by the sea. It's peaceful, beautiful, secure, but not a prison underground like here. It would be the perfect place to take them, to re-educate them. Why? Why what, sir? Why are you doing this? I thought that was obvious, General. I want them to live. Raymond, yesterday you came to see me. Today I'm visiting you. <laughs> I've learned how to move on these crutches. Something crazy is going on here. No one is guarding us anymore. Someone unstrapped my bed, left the door unlocked, and a pair of crutches by... Ray, what's the matter with you? You know what this place is? A great big laboratory. <laughs> we could have died out there in space. We'd have been better off. Instead, we survive a crash landing on an unknown planet. Against all odds, it's a... A planet within the range of our lifestyle. A planet with an oxygen atmosphere. With a, with yes, it would have been better to die in space. It's never better to die when you can live. Ray, you've got to pull yourself together. I call it a living death. No, no, I call it surviving. Well, if it isn't the good doctor... You will both please change into these garments. Why? What's going on? Once clothed in these work uniforms, you could pass for a couple of technicians. Here are your identification badges. Wait a minute. What are you up Quickly, to? Quickly. There's not much time. Time for what? For your escape, of course. Escape? They've staged a safety drill and cleared the halls for 30 minutes. 
That will give us just enough time to make it up to level one. And what, may I ask, is waiting for us at level one? Transportation out of here. To where? Do you trust me, Colonel? Why should I trust anybody on this planet? Because you need a friend. Doctor, why the sudden change? Why are you doing this? Because like you, I am an explorer. Escape? That's a joke. Escape where? Major Raymond, there's a whole world outside. But it's the wrong world. Gentlemen, you can come willingly or not at all. Raymond. It's the wrong world. Raymond. It's the only world we've got now. Is your planet all like this? A desert? No. When we head northwest, you'll be able to see the ocean. I'm glad you decided to come with us, Major Raymond. Very glad. Did I have a choice? Perhaps someday you might even learn to call our planet home. No, Doctor. Home is a billion miles away. And what about you, Colonel? I don't really know. You say this vehicle is headed in the direction of the ocean? Yes. Uh, tell me more about an ocean. There is water as far as the eye can see. Is such a thing possible? In fact, water makes up three quarters of our world. Three quarters? Why, that's fantastic. It's impossible, Perry. I assure you it is quite possible, Major. There are many amazing things we can see, if you will let us show them to you. Yes. This is a most amazing planet. What do you call it, Doctor? I call it home. And one day you will also. For the meantime, Colonel, you can just call it... Earth. Earth, the third planet from a tiny yellow star, perched near the edge of a somewhat insignificant galaxy, swallowed up in an infinity of galaxies in an endless universe. Yet... For all our unimportance, who knows how brightly the light of our little world might shine in some distant night sky, billions of light years away. I'll be back shortly. How wise was Lord Tennyson? Surely a man before his time. I am part of all that I have met, he wrote. Yet all experience is an arch where through gleams that untraveled world. And that is what we do here. Present archways to untraveled worlds. Worlds not only light years away, but yesterdays away. Worlds of tomorrow. And then again, worlds not far beyond our backyard. It all depends on where one's interests lie. Our cast included Marion Seldes, Gordon Gould, and Bernie Grant. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. I hope you enjoyed this episode of CBS Radio Mystery Theater. If you enjoyed this and want to hear more, please subscribe to this channel. You can also visit my other YouTube channel by searching Mr. Brian McCarthy in the YouTube search bar.